Do you ever wish you could witness the greatness and power of God in action today, beyond what is written in the Bible? At Pilgrim Way Lives, we collect and bring you testimonies from Christians around the world of what God is doing in their lives to show you that our Lord Jesus Christ is very much alive today. Your testimony might be the only one that will resonate with someone somewhere around the globe, so come and testify. We collect testimonies in all formats, whether it's video, audio, or written. No testimony is too small. Let God use your testimony for good. You can testify in person or online by sending us your testimony at pilgrimwaylives.com slash testify. Join us in this conquest in gathering and sharing testimonies by supporting us financially at pilgrimwaylives.com slash donate. Thank you for supporting and participating in Pilgrim Way Lives. For more information about our ministry, visit pilgrimwaylives.com and contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. I guess a big life event that we should probably talk about is doing foster care. Oh, yeah. Because that was big. That's huge. And so after he came to the Lord, I had had this desire for a while to do foster care. So life is good. Ryan's a believer. I've graduated from school. I'm working. He's going to school. And I felt this like knocking, this like call from the Lord. Um, and he was... I felt like he was telling me that we needed to do foster care. And I was like, yeah, 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 like, whatever. You know, I had seen my sister go through it. Her son was reunified really hard um, for them to go through that reunification process. He'd been with them for a really long time. It still was not an ideal situation for him to be going back. So I kind of had that wall there. But I also had this this wall of, you know, Ryan didn't really want kids when we got married. So I remember telling God, I was like, fine. Like, just basically throwing my hands up. Like, okay, Lord, you're putting this on my heart. You want me to do this. I'm going to talk to my husband about it. He's going to say no. The man is the leader. And then you can get off my back. <laughs> right? Not a good thing to tell God to get off your back, probably. Yes, true. <laughs> but <laughs> I talked to Ryan about it. And he was like, great, let's... Let's go until the Lord closes the door. So we went through that whole process with the support of people in our connect group, went through that process and got our foster care license. And the very first placement we had, or we had a handful of, of real quick placements, but then we got a long-term placement of two kids, two little, little ones. And then we found out they had two other siblings in another home. And my husband, the man who doesn't want children at all, was like, we should bring the other kids in, the older kids. Because the only time the babies would actually smile is when they would see each other, right? And so you were like, they're siblings, they all need to be together. And I'm like, who is this person? <laughs> he doesn't even want kids. We already have two. We have two, two kids in foster. If you add two more, that's like six kids. That's yep. a lot of kids. Two to six kids in a matter of a couple months, of a month. Weeks, yeah. weeks, yeah, a couple weeks. Oh, the Lord gave you a whole new husband. Oh, man, he you, did. You prayed, right? Which is, <laughs> so that's, I have a friend who I had hung out with a lot, and she knew Ryan from before he was a believer, and then she started hanging out with us again after, and she actually looked at me one day and was like, I thought you were married to someone different. <laughs> like, that's how drastic the difference was in Ryan's life, is that she thought he was a totally different person. I mean, he is. God makes all things um, new, right? He, com he completes us. So, yeah, it was very much like being married to a different person because I was like, my jaw just, I think, dropped. So we did foster care. We thought it was just going to be a quick thing. And... New Mexico's foster care system is very pro-reunification. Adoptions typically take a long time. And these kids were in our home and fully adopted less than two years from being placed in our home. So it was a whirlwind. Yeah. Yeah. It was a whirlwind. It was a lot. Because we were still a few months in to building a marriage, getting to know each other. We didn't have a foundation. Um, and it was just busy. Life was just busy. You know, life is busy anyway, under the best of circumstances. So all of that to say that slowly, under the course of just busyness, we were getting ready to move because we had this 
We needed a needed a bigger house, right? Oh, you had like <laughs> like more, a lot more kids <laughs> in a matter of weeks. Right. So we needed yeah. a bigger house. So we we're getting ready to move, and I was working overtime. You were working overtime. And on the house, yeah. We were and on the house. Modeling, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we were trying to pay off our debt. We were like, we, we had bought a new van so that we could have more seats because we knew we wanted to do foster care, you know, so it was like, oh, we need a van. I wonder if we would have just like prayed about it a little more with how God would have provided. Oh. He would have just dropped a van from heaven into our yard. Yeah. Just Pop, popped <laughs> all the not, tires as it landed. Somebody's just backing up the driveway. De, de, de. Here's the keys. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> might have happened. We yeah. were doing a lot. We were we were walking with the Lord, but I don't think we were fully relying on Him. Yeah. We were doing a lot as we opposed to allowing God to do the work. Yeah. yeah. And I think that I, for myself, allowed pride to start to build up in my heart. So it's because, you know, we looked like such great people and people said that, oh, you guys are so great. I could never do that. You know, and so it was like, rather than being like, yeah, God is sustaining us. God is giving us this rather than giving him the glory, which is what he deserves. There's nothing good in me. In me. There's nothing good in me. <laughs> you know, like, in me. Oh, yeah, no. I'll, I'll go under the bus with you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I go under. There's nothing good in me. It's all God. Right? But rather than being a mirror and reflecting the light and the glory back to the Lord, I allowed it to start to build up. And then I also allowed resentment and bitterness and unforgiveness to stay in my heart toward Ryan for the early years and kind of started to play sometimes these what if games, I think a lot. What if things would have been different? What if, you know, and it's just, there's no point because it's not. And <laughs> God is good. Is. And yeah, and God is good. Yeah. So I allowed these things in my life. And so those, the pride and the unforgiveness and all that coupled with just the busyness and my quiet time started to slip just because I was busy and I didn't have time and I'm doing good things because I'm being a mom and I'm going to work and, you know, accomplishing things. So that was really detrimental because then I kind of had this, I mean, adoption was great and it was beautiful and I'm so thankful for my kids, but I also had a little bit of this identity crisis, if you will, of who am I rather than seeing my identity in Christ. It was like, just kind of heavy. It was really heavy. And so someone from work started giving me a lot of attention and saw me not as a mom to six kids, but what I felt as me. And so I began to like find my identity in that relationship. So after we moved, then I started having an affair, which lasted for a year. So it was really hard and we had actually separated twice once anyway it was not good it was not good yeah I was just living a hundred percent for me I was totally selfish every decision that I was making was just about me and lying and covering up the lies right you start telling that one lie and then not you me I started telling that one lie <laughs> I mean you might jump I've, I've done it too this is your fault <laughs> <laughs> Like, you, you are all the way in Africa lying about me. <laughs> <laughs> but once we start telling a lie, I had to cover up and cover up and cover up. And then... And it's hard to keep track because you, for, you forget what you lied about to begin with. It's true. Yeah. It's true, yeah. right? Yeah. And so... And then I would justify because I knew that it was not right. I knew that what I was doing was not right. But I would justify it. Well, look at what he did. Look at this, you know, this is just, you know, whatever, I don't know. Whatever stupid lies I was telling myself, you know, lying to everybody else, lying to my family, lying to my kids, lying to my husband, lying to me. Um, and so it was just all, all consuming and selfish. That's what it was. It was selfish. And I remember having a conversation a little while later with my son and I had apologized to him. And so I um, told him, I started to say, that I had always done what was right for him, like in the moment, even though I might not have been right, like I was what I thought was right. And I had to really stop myself and just be completely bluntly honest with myself because there was not, there was a solid year where I didn't do what was right for my kids, where I didn't even think I was doing what was right for my kids. I totally lived 100% for me. So that was a rough year. 
it was really rough um, for everybody. And through that process, I could feel God in the early stages being like, I had the conviction, this is wrong. This is not what is supposed to be. This is not my intention for your life. You know, this person ultimately just needs me. Mm -hmm. And I, and there was one time and it just like kills me because God spoke so clearly and I was so wrapped up in me that I just shut him out. You know, thank God that he's good and his forgiveness and restoration is way better than what we could do. But I remember the Lord just being like, like this person needs me and needs relationship with other people, but not like this. And I remember thinking that I was in control. I'm like, oh, I'm close to the line, but it's okay. I'm not going to cross it. And then it's like, boom, you know, and <laughs> well, that well, that boring. line's not so bad. That line's not so bad. You know, it could be worse. <laughs> so anyway, um, so important to just remain in the word and in community. And this was during COVID. So there wasn't a lot of community and, um, I hadn't spent the time building relationships with people that I think I didn't have a lot of people straight up calling me out. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important, and we've tried to do that now, be more intentional about building relationships. I know for sure that there are definitely people in my life that if I started acting the same way, would be like, what are you thinking? Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of a different situation. But yeah. I did, I isolated myself on purpose. Um, I feel like there was only really two of us that regularly were like, "Yeah, stop it. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, it was not good. And then, I don't even... So we did. We got split up. I moved in with my parents. And so the kids would be with me at my parents half the time. And then they'd be with her back at the house half the time. And so we were kind of doing, and that only lasted, I don't know, a month or two. It wasn't too long. I wasn't happy. That's, I mean, the thing is, I was just miserable. Sin is satisfying for like a second. Great. Is it a second. Even in the middle of it, it was like so dissatisfying and so empty. And um, yeah, I mean, looking back, there's a reason God tells us not to do things. It's not because he's like this controlling guy that just wants us to follow only, you know, his rules. It's because he loves us and cares about us. And he knows that like this is so, so satisfying. But um, because he's God and because he's good and in the midst of all of that, Ryan did admit to me that he had had an affair, which was hugely took a minute. <laughs> I was going to say, it made things worse before it made things better. It did. It made things worse. So, because I had confronted him about it at least three or four times in our marriage. Yeah. There were times where I was like, it's so bad, he has no reason to lie to me. And there were times where I was like, it's so good, he has no reason to lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Either way, don't lie. <laughs> so, for me, I guess I was trying to, so I wanted to bury, like, after it happened, I was like, oh, man, I just need to bury this. Like, this is, it was a dark time in my life, and I just wanted to be non-existent. And so, it, it wouldn't come up for a while. So, then when she would, like, several years later, did, was there something that happened? No? No? Managed to bring it up? Yep. It was gone. I'm moving forward, especially once I became a believer. Like once God like brought me forward, I was like, okay, I don't want anything to do with my past. Like that's the old me. I want to focus on like letting the Lord work on the new me and moving forward. So even then, I was like, nope, just just putting that under the blanket. Um, and then finally, like she finally was like, I remember you being like, so I finally confessed. Right, God was like, it was a nice moment because we were separated, but I was over. I had come, she had asked me to come over to hang out. So we were sitting in the backyard, we were talking, and there was a fire pit going and everything else. And, and finally, right then, the Lord was like, yep, this is it. It's now or never. Like, you need to tell her. And so I just straight up was like, you were right. You were right about the affair. Are you in Asia, Africa, South America, Europe, Australia, or North America with a burning testimony of what God did in your life to share? Do you have a testimony you want to share with the world? There are two options for you to do that. The option one, online testimony submission. 
To submit your testimony online, send us your written audio and or video recorded testimony at contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. If your testimony file is too large to be sent as an email attachment, such as a large audio or video file, send us a public sharing link to it in the email or include the link in the online testimony submission form on our website at pilgrimwaylives.com slash online dash submission. Make sure the link is set to public to ensure that we can access and download the testimony. Please include pictures pertaining to your testimony that we can use during the production phase to enhance your testimony. Instructions for online testimony submission can be found at pilgrimwaylives.com slash online dash submission. The option two, in-person testimony recording. Contact us to schedule an in-person testimony session by filling out the form at pilgrimwaylives.com slash in dash person dash testimony. This option greatly depends on our availability to schedule an in-person testimony recording session with you. For more information regarding in-person testimony recordings, visit pilgrimwaylives.com slash in dash person dash testimony. For more information regarding our ministry, visit pilgrimwaylives.com or email us at contact at pilgrimwaylives.com. Thank you and happy testifying. Hope to hear from you soon. God bless and shalom.